Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome to our channel. In our previous video, we discussed one of the important concepts of script customization, that is correlation. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. In today's video, we will talk about functions. It is important to understand the different built-in functions of JMeter as they will help us to perform various operations during scripting. So, without any further delay, let's get started. Based on Wikipedia definition, a function is a sequence of program instructions that perform a specific task packaged as a unit. We can also say that it is a block of organized reusable code that is used to perform a single or related actions. Functions provide better modularity for the application. That means developers can write code once and use it multiple times within a program. So functions can be divided into two categories, built-in functions. Built-in functions are predefined functions in a programming language that perform specific tasks. These functions are provided by the language itself and can be used to simplify common programming tasks. And then user-defined functions. User-defined functions are functions created by the programmer to perform a specific task. These functions help them to organize the code, make it easier to understand and promote code reusability. Okay. Based on JMeter official documentation, Functions are special values that can populate fields of any sampler or other elements in a test tree. That means these are special keywords that perform specific action during the test execution. These functions are used to generate or modify extract information and perform various other operations within your test scripts. Okay. So let's understand the syntax of the JMeter function. Here function name is the name of the function. And within parentheses, we need to specify arguments to this function. In this syntax example, var1, var2 and var3 are the arguments of the function. These arguments vary from function to function and some functions will take arguments and some not. JMeter functions are always case sensitive and make sure you write them in the same way as they specified. Okay? In JMeter, all the built-in functions are grouped into different categories based on their functionality. So this categorization will give us a better idea of where to use them. Okay? Now let's go through those different groups. First one, information. The functions under this group will be used to retrieve or display the information. For example, they help us to identify the threads data like thread number or thread name and the load generators IP address or name, etc. Next, input functions. Input functions are used to read or write the data. They are helpful in scenarios where we need to read the data from a file or write some data to the file. After that, we have calculation functions. Math calculations or random numeric variables are often necessary when developing the scripts. For example, in one of the transactions, we may need to select randomly one option from the available list or sometimes we may need to generate some random string as a password for the login scenario. So, we can make use of these calculation functions to achieve such different requirements. Okay. Next, scripting functions. JMeter supports different scripting languages like Groovy, Beanshell, JavaScript, etc. In some situations, we may need to execute those scripting language code inside our JMeter script. To handle such requirements, we can make use of the available scripting built-in functions in JMeter. Okay. Next, properties. We can assume that properties are like variables which can be used to configure and customize various aspects of the tool's behavior. By using these properties functions, we can perform operations like reading them or setting the properties, etc. Next, variable functions. In Apache JMeter, variables allow you to store and reuse values within your test plan. They can be used to parameterize test elements, share data between different components, and dynamically modify requests or configurations. So, using the variable functions, we can manipulate or extract the information from the variables. Next, string functions. In some situations, we may need to transform or convert the strings. The most common usage is to either URL encode or decode or HTML escape or an escape. With the help of string functions, we can meet such requirements in the scripting. Finally, formatting function. In this category, at the time of video recording, we only have one function that is date time convert. This function converts a source format date to a target format. Most of the time, we might see different dates during script recording with different formats. So, with the help of this function, we can easily convert the date to desired format. After hearing all these different groups, you must be wondering how any person can remember all these groups and functions, right? That's why JMeter created a helper called function helper dialog that provides assistance and information about the various functions available in JMeter. So let's open the JMeter and look at some of the JMeter functions. 
So I have created a simple script to demonstrate the different functions. Okay, so in this script, I have one thread group with one dummy sampler and test results. So we will use only these two elements to understand different functions. Before we go any further with the functions, let's quickly understand the function helper dialog because to write any functions, we will be using this function helper dialog a lot. So let's understand the different options available inside this helper dialog. To access this function dialog, we need to go to tools and then function helper dialog in this function helper dialog first it will show all the different available built-in geometry functions okay so you can select whatever the function that you want to create for example let's select time function so if you want to know more about time function then you can click this help button which will take you to the geometry official documentation so here it will tell you what exactly this time function for and what are the different parameters that we need to use and different examples okay inside the function parameters it will tell you what are the different function parameters that that we need to pass to this function some may be optional some may be mandatory if they are optional then they will mention that within the brackets of those parameters for example format string for simple date format is optional parameter and similarly name of the variable is also an optional parameter so either you can specify those parameters or you can also ignore let's ignore those for now okay and then we have generate and copy to clipboard which will generate this function and also copy that function into clipboard so that we can paste that function in our script so let's click the generate and copy to clipboard so here if you see it generated the function automatically and also copied that function into clipboard and we also have the results of the function so when we execute this function this is what the result that we are going to get okay and then it also displays different current geometer variables and if you want to reset those variables you can click the reset then it will reset to the default state and again you can generate and copy to the clipboard okay so this is the function helper dialog you don't need to remember any function you can simply Simply just come here and then select the function that you are interested if you want to understand this function more then you can click help and then go through the documentation and once you feel that information you can simply generate it and then copy that function and use it in the script okay so during the scripting we will be using this function helper a lot because it will be very difficult to remember all those function names and syntaxes right so every time if you want to write some function then we will come to this helper dialog and then select that function and fill all the different parameters and then generate so now with the help of this function helper we will go through some of the commonly used functions okay the first one in our list is thread num so let's quickly go through help once so the thread number function simply returns the number of the thread currently being executed let's say if you are running 10 threads you want to know the, the thread number and you want to use that information in your script then you can make use of this thread number function okay if you see the function parameters for this thread num function there are no parameters required we just need to write the function name okay so let's click the generate and copy which will generate the function syntax here and then go back to our script and change the name of the dummy sampler to thread and then function so that we can see the result as thread 1 thread 2 thread 3 and so on so let's go to the thread group and change the number of threads to 10 and run the script you see here thread 1 thread 2 thread 3 thread 5 thread 4 all these numbers are generated using this thread num function. So if you have any such requirement to know the current thread, then you can use this thread num function. And the second function in our list is counter. So let's go to the function helper dialog and look for counter. If you want to generate any unique number for every iteration, then you can make use of this counter function. Okay. And again, if you want to know more about, you can go to you can click help and then go through the documentation and for this counter function we have a couple of parameters one if you want to have a unique counter for each user then you should be specifying as true otherwise you should specify as false okay so let's make it as false and then if you want to store the value of that counter into a variable then you should be specifying the name of that variable let's say counter var okay now click generate and copy to clipboard which will generate the function and also at the same time it will show the results so when we execute this function we will be getting one for the first time and based on the number of iteration this counter will increase we can also see the counter where in current geometer variable okay so let's use this function inside our dummy sampler say counter and then paste the function so let's clear the results and rerun the script so again trend threads will be executed so let's go to thread 1 and go to the request data you can see the counter 2 and if you go to thread 2 because the first thread that was executed is thread 2 and that is why the counter value is 1 and then thread 1 was executed that is why the counter becomes 2 
after that thread 4 thread 5 thread 6 so this is the order that threads got executed that is why the counter value is in the sequential order for these threads so when we run the test it's not necessary that always thread 1 will be executed first right so sometimes thread 2 will execute first and then sometimes thread 3 thread 4 like that so in this example first thread 2 it got executed and then thread 1 after that thread 4 and then thread 5 and so on okay since we don't want each user to have a unique number that is why we specified false and for that reason only we can see that counter got incremented for every thread if you specify that as true so let's change it to true and then rerun the same script and then see the results so if you see thread 1 we have counter 1 again thread 2 we have counter 1 thread 5 counter 1 because when we say true as a first argument to the counter function then it will generate a unique number for each user right so if you specify false then it will not generate a unique counter for each user so Sometimes we need this counter variable inside the loop to understand how many iterations that we have executed based on some requirement we can either stop the loop or we can continue it. So based on your requirement you can make use of this counter functions to generate a unique number in the script. Okay. And next one on our list is date time convert. So let's again go to the function helper dialog and then select date time convert so this is a formatting function and this is the only function available in the formatting group so let's quickly go to help the date time convert function converts a date that is in source format to a target format so it has different arguments the first one is a date string here we need to specify the date which we want to convert from source date format to the target date format and next one is a source date format so you need to specify currently what is the format of the date and then the target date format so which format that you want to convert the date and finally the name of the variable where you want to store the date okay and here if you see the required columns some of them are required fields and some of them are optional okay now go back to the function helper dialog fill the function parameter so first one is the date to be format so let's say our date is 0 1 month and then 26 and then 2024 so this is the date that we want to convert so what is the source format first month and then date and then y y y okay because we specified the year in four digits so that is why we need to specify four y's what is the format that we want to convert let's say we want date to become first and then slash and then after that month and then year so once you fill the fields then click generate so this is the function we need to write in the script and this will be the output so we want our date to be in this format so first we have date and then there is a forward slash after that month and then forward slash and then year okay so now go back to script and then paste it here now let's clear the results and rerun the script so if you go to first you can see the date as 260124 you will be seeing the same date in every thread because we have hard coded the date right you can parameterize this date and then you can replace it here so that you will be getting a dynamic date so if you want to convert any dates then you can make use of this date to convert function okay so the next one is random function again go to function helper dialog and select random so this random function will be used to generate a random number so this is one of the most commonly used function in the scripts so you need to understand how to create this random function there are three function parameters that we need to specify one is optional and other two are mandatory so the first parameter is minimum value allowed for a range of values so here we need to specify the minimum number let's say you want to generate a random number between 10 to 100 so the minimum value is 10 and then the maximum value allowed for a range of values the maximum value in our example is 100 and let's store this into a variable called random okay and then click generate and copy to clipboard then we will have this function at the same time we will also see the results so if you click again it will generate a different number so if you want to generate some random numbers during your scripting then you can use this function so let's go to the script and then go to our dummy sampler say random number pasted function okay every time whenever we execute this dummy sampler request it will generate a new random number so let's clear the results and rerun the script if you check the thread 4 we have a random number 75 thread 110 thread 250 thread 366 so this function will be handy to generate any random numbers okay and the next function in our list is the random string so again go to function helper dialog and look for random string so the use case of this function is to generate any a random string so sometimes we want to generate a unique random text for password in such scenarios you can use this random string function to generate a unique text okay 
or sometimes you want to store some unique string into a variable then also you can use this random string so there are three parameters for this function first one is the random string length so you want to specify how many characters that you want that random string let's say i want a random string of 15 characters and then the next parameter is characters to use for a random string generation so you need to specify what different characters that you want to use for generating this random string so let's say i want to have a b c d character and then also some special characters and some numbers okay and next one is the variable which is optional let's give a variable name as random text and then generate so if you see here it is generating the 15 characters length of a string every time we click generate it will generate a new string with a combination of the different characters that we have given okay so let's go to the script again then say in the dummy sampler random string and then paste that function let's clear the results and run the script so let's go to thread one we can see a random string of this and then also this random string every thread has a different random string so this is one of the use case so if you want to have a, a random string for every iteration then you can make use of this random string function and sometimes we may need to generate a unique id so in that case we can use the uuid function so uuid nothing but universally unique identifier for this uuid function we don't need to fill any parameters let's generate if you want to write the function then you need to write like this dollar within the flower brackets underscore underscore uuid so when you generate that it will create a unique identifier okay let's go to script again and have it here uuid and then paste sometimes in the application also they will have some unique identifier so in that case if you want to generate those kind of numbers we can use this uuid function so let's clear the results and run the script for thread one you can see a unique identifier and then thread two it's a different thread six is different okay and sometimes we want to use other scripting languages code inside the jmeter in those cases we can use the supported scripting languages like javascript groovy or bean shell okay let's go to function helper dialog again and then look for javascript function and then here we need to specify the expression so i want to generate again a random number using the javascript code so in javascript if you want to generate a random number we will make use of math class and inside math class we can use floor to round the number and within that floor function we will use the random function which is again available in math class so math random and then multiply by 10 okay and we will store this into a variable called javascript var and then let's generate it will also generate a random number but here we are using the javascript code instead of the random number so it depends on your need either you can use javascript or you can use random right but to demonstrate an example i have used a random number but sometimes we may be using some other complex code as well so to execute any of those supported language scripts then we can use these functions like we have javascript we have groovy bean shell okay let's also paste this function javascript code and then paste it and also just clear the results and rerun it to make sure that it is working as expected so every time when we execute it is generating a random number between 1 to 10 Okay. some situations we want to convert the case of a given string into small case or upper case so if you want to meet those kind of requirements then you can use the change case function so here we need to specify which string to modify let's say learning jmeter is fun this is the string that we want to modify and we want to convert this string into lower case so let's specify lower here are the different arguments by default it will use upper if you are not specifying anything since i want this string to be converted into lower case that is why i specify lower and you can also use capitalize and let's store it into a variable called jmeter string i'm just giving some random variable name but you can give anything here okay jmeter string generate so if you see here this is the function syntax to convert this particular string into lower and the result is this so let's go back to script and then say change case and then paste this function and then again let's clear the results and rerun the script to make sure that we are getting the right output it converted the uppercase string into lower 
And the final function that we are going to discuss is the URL encode or URL decode. Okay, so let's go to tools and then again function helper dialog. Let's look for URL encode. Sometimes as part of our request, we need to encode the string into URL encoding format and then send it to the server. Okay, then only it will understand the request and then give us back the response. To encode any string in the URL, then you need to specify that string as a parameter. So let's say we want to encode this particular URL, which is JMeter official site, apache.org and some test. Let's assume that this is a URL, then we want to encode this URL. So let's generate. So if you see here, it converted all those characters like two forward slash and then the question mark, everything it converted into URL encoding. So if you look for HTML URL encoding in the browser and go to W3Schools website, you will see here URL different formats, right? So for every character, what is the format? For example, the forward slash that we have used, if we encode that, it will be converted into percentage 2f. Similarly, if you have any question mark, then that will be percentage 3f. So if you go back to our JMeter, we will be seeing the same thing, right? See percentage 3f for question mark and then double slash is for percentage 2f. Okay, so if you want to encode any string in the URL, then you can use this URL encode. Similarly, you can also decode the string in the URL. So let's copy this result and then use the decode function to decode the string and then paste the value and then generate. It decoded those string into this. So if you have any such requirements to encode or decode, then you can use this URL encode and decode functions. Okay, these are few commonly used functions and based on your need, you can use any of these available built-in functions. Okay, so you don't need to remember any of this function. Whenever you need to write some function, you can come to this function helper and look for the available functions. If anything is meeting your requirement, then you can use that function. And if you want to know more about that function, you can go to help and then go through the documentation. Okay, so in addition to the built-in functions, we also have some custom functions in the form of a plugin. So if you want to install a plugin, we need to go to options and then plugin manager, go to available plugins and look for custom. Since that custom functions I have already installed it, that is why it is not showing up here. But if I go back to install plugins, I can see those custom JMeter functions. So if you want to know more about the available custom JMeter functions, you can click this link. So that will take us to the documentation where they specified what are all the different available custom functions. We have choose random, double sum, environment is defined. So you can use any of these functions based on your requirement. Okay. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you understand the JMeter functions explained in this video. In case anything is not clear or requires more detailed information, please feel free to mention it in the comment section. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you with the next video in this module. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.